Let's bring in three candidates now to talk about the different party approaches to independent costing of the campaign promises and proposals being done by the Parliamentary Budget Officer. Steve McKinnon is the Liberal candidate for re-election in the riding of Gatineau, Quebec. Lisa Raitt is the Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party and the candidate for re-election in the riding of Milton in Ontario. And Angela McEwen is the NDP candidate in Ottawa, West Nepean. It's good to see all three of you. Thanks for being here. Good evening. Steve McKinnon, let me, let me start with you. The Liberals created these new powers for the PBO. The other parties are getting their costing done by the PBO and announcing proposals with the costing, but the Liberals uh, aren't following uh, that promise to have all uh, the proposals scrutinized by the PBO and saying it'll be just the big ticket items and eventually they'll be released with the whole platform. How come? Well, uh, let's, let's first uh, review all that. We respect the PBO. Uh, we like the PBO. We've invested in the PBO, and we've made, uh, of course, a lot of improvements to the PBO system. So all of that's very good in a democracy. And of course, we're signed up uh, to have our platform. Uh, our platform will be fully costed, and indeed, all the major items will be uh, costed by the PBO, and those will be released uh, as we uh, can better contextualize them. Uh, and that was, of course, after we uh, get out our major platform planks. So there's no question. Uh, that uh, Canadians will be able to make their judgments and uh, render judgment on our platform and on our commitments uh, in the full knowledge of what they're going to cost. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have the PBO uh, costings uh, out, and we're going to have those uh, done on our major commitments uh, within the context of a fully costed platform. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll uh, drill down on some of that in a moment. Lisa Ray, let me bring you in here. The, the Conservatives at first were... Uh, didn't seem to be too hot on the idea initially of having the PBO go over all of this. You've, you were reassured in meetings with the PBO about how this would work, and now you're releasing promises along with the PBO costing. So uh, why are you doing that? Why have you come to that uh, decision? And what do you think of Mr. McKinnon's explanation? The concern at the beginning was always about whether or not we'd be able to ensure that we weren't going to have any leaks of what our platform was. And after our meetings with the Parliamentary Budget Office, we ended very clearly that was not going to be the case. So we have submitted for costing and we're very happy that we've done so. And interestingly enough for me, it sounds like what Steve McKinnon is saying is we like the PBO. We think he's doing a great job. We're just not going to use them. So their entire platform is going to come with a little bit of an asterisk next to it, which says not fully costed by the Parliamentary Budget Office. Okay, Angela McEwen, the NDP is using the PBO. Um, why do you think it's important to do that? Well, I think it's important that when you're making an announcement about something that along with those headlines, you're backed up by the credibility of the parliamentary budget officer. So it seems to me like the liberals are trying to have it two ways. They can make these big announcements and have, have the news there without the PBO contradicting them. And then hopefully maybe later on when they release it, um, it'll be buried by more information. Uh, Steve McKinnon, the changes the liberals made to the Parliament of Canada Act uh, in the rules, the new powers, let me, let me, tell you what it says, you, you may know. Uh, once a costed promise has been made public, the PBO should release its costing document as soon as possible. Uh, and for the other parties, that's met at the same time. And it's pretty clear on how this was supposed to work, I think, when you hear those words. So why the delay? Why not, if you announced, and we're going to get into some of the things you announced today, when you're announcing them, why not have them backed up by what the PBO says it'll cost? Well, of course, uh, you know, nothing's ever done in isolation. Uh, public policy is a continuum of things, and many things connect to other things. So uh, in order to better contextualize all of that, I think we want to make sure that Canadians have access to the appropriate and accurate information. And uh, they will in the very short term, Peter. I can assure uh, all of those watching us that uh, Canadians will be able to make a determination on our major commitments fully costed by the independent PBO, uh, it was in the context of a fully ca costed platform, okay. and we look but, forward but to doing me... that. But, but you know, what I'd like to know is whether the Conservatives are going to show us uh, their fiscal plan, because here we have Mr. Scheer. You, you know, it's all well and good to cost your commitments, your tax cuts, your spending, and what have you. Uh, but, he, but here's what we know about Conservatives. Uh, they're promising also to balance the budgets. So in Ontario, that's meant one very, very clear thing. And, uh, you know, we hope that the Conservatives put out a lot of their assumptions upon which they're okay. making all of these spending commitments and I'm, these tax I'm, cut commitments. And, and we're going to let Lisa Ray answer that. But first, I, I want to come back to, uh, to the question with you. So, for instance, today, 
Uh, the Prime Minister made, uh, the, the Liberal leader made a, a pension announcement today uh, that, that the party says will cost, I think it's $1.2 billion or $1.4 billion. The party says that. So, uh, I mean, so you've put a price on it, just not, mm -hmm. not costed by the PBO. So explain, explain what this interconnectedness is that doesn't allow you to have a PBO costed today, but the party did. Well, I'm not going to get too far into uh, that's all, okay. All we that kind of, we are okay uh, in the weeds. This is an audience uh, that doesn't uh, mind weeds. No, I, I very I very much understand that. And given uh, the level of sophistication of the people watching us, they will know that uh, some public policy items uh, have salut salutary or carry on effects uh, in other areas of public policy. And so, uh, in order to make a more accurate presentation or a more accurate assumption of of what uh, items and what public policy initiatives cost. Uh, they need to be presented as a as a whole, and that's what we will be okay. doing. Okay, Lisa Red, go ahead. Even when they write the rules, Peter, they can't seem to follow them. I mean, they are the ones that came up with how the process was supposed to unfold, and now they're taking on past how to do it. And as far as them saying they're waiting for the right time to contextualize, it just means that they don't want to submit their costs because they know people will see exactly how much it's going to cost. And it just leads us to the conclusion we all know it's going to happen, which is they want to tax you more. And what we've learned from the Ontario Federal Liberal Caucus is they're going to go after the sale of your home and the profit well, that in is, the sale of your home. Let's just be That's clear about that. Point. That is categorically false. It's been debunked uh, in every possible uh, uh, form uh, in which it's been presented. It has been debunked yeah, to thoroughly, and it's not happening. No, right. it's not. Let, let, it's, let, it's, let, 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 they're not, but maybe they should. Right? How, how do you <laughs> mean that? After, oh. so, uh, so the sale of your home <laughs> yeah. where that's, that's tax-free, where people are flipping and they don't, they don't necessarily own that home for more than two years. That's a problem, right? Okay. So, so Lisa, you can take that up with the NDP. <laughs> the... Now, now, we the minority, now we see the minority government striking deals. Look, they had their own, <laughs> it had Liberal on it. It came from Adam Vaughn, their own housing parliamentary secretary. And they can't deny it wasn't that it was their policy okay, let, that they put forward to go into the platform. Let, 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 let me draw us back. Do we debunked. look? Was any of that run by the PBO? That's that's where we are today. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. So, so Angela. So I mean, here we have your your leader today uh, uh, made an announcement of a of a dental plan uh, for the country and uh, for certain uh, income earners in the country at least at least to start. And again, that had supporting documents from the parliamentary budget officer. So. I mean, what's your answer to Mr. McKinnon that there's these things are often interconnected, so there, there's, are, there's a value yeah. in waiting till you know everything about the possible other effects of a program before you roll out what this part of it costs. Right, which is interesting because that's true. And you're an economist, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and deal I am with this an economist. I deal with budgets yeah. all the time, um, but that's not how this parliamentary budget process was set up. They were set up just to look at individual items. So the dental plan, how much does that cost? Not how does it interact with other programs? And they're not going to cost our fiscal plan. They're not going to say this balances out or the fiscal plan makes sense. They're going to say this policy announcement that they proposed costs, it, according to our assumptions, this much money. So what I hear from Mr. McKinnon is that they didn't like what the PBO said to them and they went a different way, that, which I is mean, also a possibility. You can get the PBO to do the costing and if you don't like it, you can say, before the process has completed, you can say, you know what, We're, we never just, spoke. Just as, never a, as a point of reference, we heard uh, the, the I, I don't know if you can call him, the, he's not the founding PBO, the original PBO, <laughs> Kevin Page, on this program saying, Mr. McKinnon, that uh, he, he thinks it's preferable to do it the way the other two, the, the Conservatives and the Democrats uh -huh. are doing it, to keep people in the loop right from the beginning. It allows other people outside, not just other political parties, to look at these proposals and have a good uh, amount of time to analyze it. So I, I guess that brings me to the well, question of, okay, go ahead. Well, I think it's preferable to have Canadians vote in full knowledge of uh, major policy initiatives that are being presented what the uh, independent costing of those is in the context of a fully costed platform. That's what we're going to do. That's the principle that we are striving to uphold. And that's the principle that we brought in when we brought in uh, this very initiative uh, with, an, with, with an independent for the parliamentary, parliamentary budget officer. With an in, independent parliamentary budget officer. And, and uh, again, there is some, uh, uh, there will be a full and complete picture for Canadians 
before they vote. And uh, that's so uh, our the, commitment to Canadians, uh, and we uh, think uh, that's pretty what, transparent. What, what, and, what was and, the point of the rule that said a cost and promise uh, that, that's in the in the Parliament Act? What's the the purpose of the rule that says a cost and promise uh, with a PBO attachment well, as soon as possible, as soon as it's been announced? Yeah, well, we want it to be accurate as well, and so we've been over this, Peter. Uh, we want to make sure that Canadians <laughs> have the full picture of the major commitments of the Liberal Party of Canada in the context of a fully costed platform. That's what we're going to deliver. And I sure hope, I sure hope that we can count on the other parties to present the entirety of their fiscal plans, because we know that Mr. Scheer can't make this math add up. He cannot put together a budget uh, or a fiscal plan that is not going to result in massive cuts to Canadians. We know he's going to cut. We know he's going to cut, uh, as he said today, supports to businesses. What are the other cuts, Lisa? Okay. Come clean. All right. Come <laughs> clean on this very uh, program and tell us, okay. is it the, is it the no, Canada let, Child let, Benefit? Let, let, is it, no, is no, it okay. pensions? So what are Lisa, the cuts? Lisa Ray, go, there's two of us on the show now asking questions. So uh, <laughs> go, go ahead and uh, and I do, I, you know, I could hold up and show it to you. We are going to ask, when are, your, when are we going to see the fiscal plans for all of the parties? Because Kevin Page and I talked about that too. That's one of the things so far missing from the conversation is, What's the fiscal plan that goes with these promises in the context of a, a changing global economy and lots of uncertainty? So let's answer that. Let's go there. Well, first of all, I reflect upon the fact that a liberal like Steve McKinnon saying we should come clean is probably the biggest piece of irony I've heard today. Uh, they got a lot to come clean for and they haven't done so. You heard Andrew Scheer, my leader today, talk about how we would make sure that we were being fiscally responsible. And what we talked about was a review of programs that seem to be only going to large companies that actually don't need the money in order to ensure that they're doing what they need to do. And we cited a couple of ones. BlackBerry is a great example. $40 million went to BlackBerry and the CEO at the press conference said, yeah, well, we didn't really need it. A lot of Canadians out there do need that kind of money. And it's important for a new conservative government to come in and review these programs to ensure that they're actually doing what they're supposed to do, which is to deliver for Canadians. And, and very quickly, when when will we see a, do, are Canadians going to wait till the end of the campaign to get everybody's, like days before they vote to, to realize what's actually on offer and how it's plugged in and how it all seems to make or supposed to make fiscal sense? Or how, how quickly well, should they have that? It's day eight, and we've already talked about our universal tax credit. We've already talked, our universal tax cut. We've talked about the tax credits. And today we're telling you how we're going to be paying for some of them. So we're far ahead of the other parties in terms of giving a fulsome fiscal picture. And my leader said today, we're going to be transparent. We're going to tell Canadians exactly what we plan to do in order to make life more affordable for them and ensure that they're the ones getting ahead. Angela McKeon, let me hear you on that. The NDP and a fiscal plan, when will we see it? Right. So the NDP has put out the values behind our fiscal plan. So we put out our whole platform. Um, earlier this year, we were way ahead of all the other parties talking about what exactly is going to underpin our decisions that we make. Because budgets, when it comes down to it, are about choices, right? And we're going to choose to um, tax the rich a little bit more. We're going to increase taxes on big corporations, on the wealthy, and we're going to close those um, loopholes that the Liberals said they would close but haven't. We're going to go after people that are evading taxes. Um, there's billions of dollars there that goes to tax havens. And we're going to use that revenue to invest in things that people need, like health care, like affordable housing. And when we do that, the economy performs better. I know this as an economist. When people have more money in their pockets, when they can afford housing, when we have those core public services that we need, the economy does better. Right. And so as long as we're um, having a better return mm -hmm. on investment, then that means that we're spending our money responsibly. And that's what a new Democrat government's going to do. All right. So what I'm hearing is there, the fiscal plans are all coming. And uh, <laughs> the, the, it sounds like the different approach to the use of the parliamentary budget officer and his costing will continue. So uh, appreciate all of you uh, giving me your time tonight. Steve McKinnon, Lisa Raid, and Angela McKinnon. Great to talk to you. We'll talk again. Bye, Steve. Bye. Good night.